Hey. How are you? Good morning, Uncle Lou here. Uh, you know, uh, when you're right, you're right, and when you're wrong, you're wrong. And, uh, it, this is something that, you know, how much champ needs to be fired tomorrow, Monday morning? Um, Hashtag support must champ uh, is dead. I'm retiring it. I'm not. I'm not even going there anymore. Um. How, how do you? I mean, you guys look like the bad news bears of college football. Missouri is not a good team. They. I mean, they're they're not. Uh, and they went down there and owned you they scored a touchdown in every conceivable way uh offensive touchdown uh, only one though uh but fumble return for a touchdown interception return for a touchdown kickoff return for a touchdown the opening kickoff punt return for a touchdown uh, on homecoming too uh, that's right, so you had all your big wigs there, donors, graduates, alumnus, all, all those people there, people watching on TV, you can hear the chant on TV, fire, must, champ, clap, 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 just, I mean, it's just embarrassing, and I was hoping that must, champ could win enough games this year to where they'd give him another year because he is such a terrible head coach. And uh, after what I saw last night, I, I just I don't think that can happen. I it, it would not surprise me at all if Muschamp is out of a job come Monday, come tomorrow afternoon. That was just one of the most embarrassing performances I've seen in a long time. Uh, wow! I mean, just totally humiliating. Uh, so, yeah, uh, but anyway, we have Florida next, uh, we're off this week, bye week for the dogs, then we, then we travel to Jacksonville to take on Florida, uh, I'm not real sure what to expect yet, I'm, I'm gonna wait a couple of, if they fire Muschamp, you know, I don't, we'll see, I, I don't, but anyway, I, I hope, I hope I'm wrong and they don't fire him this week, but I have a feeling he may be fired tomorrow, uh, I hope I'm wrong, but we'll see. But, uh, what else? Oh, Oni Kuno. Uh, I was talking with Lou Jr., uh, you know, my five-year-old son that you like to make fun of. Anyway, uh, <laughs> he watched about three minutes of your game yesterday, yeah, uh, and he went ahead and told me to tell you that y'all suck, uh, and I'm gonna have to go ahead and agree with him there. Uh, how does it feel, sir, uh, uh Mr. Oni Kuno? How does it feel to know that halfway through October, your season is over? How does that feel? I'm just curious. Um, I mean, you don't even have to make any more videos. Your season is over for you guys. Um, you're not winning the Big 12. You're not making the playoff. You're not even making one of the consolation, one of the two big consolation bowls. Um, you're going to make some mediocre bowl. Uh, so how does it feel uh, halfway through the season that you're to know that your season is over? Just I just want to know. Just curious. Uh, Georgia Tech uh, loses to North Carolina. Uh, how does this happen? I don't know. Uh, I don't even... North Carolina didn't even have any ACC wins, I don't think. I mean... You know, Georgia Tech, I, I feel about Georgia Tech just about the same way I feel, I feel about Florida with Will Muschamp. You know, I, I hope Paul Johnson sticks around Georgia Tech, you know, forever. It's That's great for everybody that has to play Georgia Tech. It's great for everybody that has to recruit against Georgia Tech. Um, 
it's just a win-win for everyone except Georgia Tech if Paul Johnson stays there. You guys continue to run this Mickey Mouse big top circus offense that you have and you continue to be 7 and 5. So, you know, but the fans, the Georgia Tech fans, they love it. They they absolutely love it. They think Paul Johnson is the greatest thing uh, since sliced bread. Uh, if you listen to any Georgia Tech fans, including Cormac the Magician, you'll hear him go on and on about how great their offense is and, you know, how they get 600 yards a game and it's just amazing. And uh, Paul Johnson is the, you know, greatest coach on earth. That's fine, sir. Uh, continue to think that. Uh, that's great. Uh, everyone everyone in the ACC thanks you uh, for supporting Paul Johnson. Uh, and Dog Nation supports you, too. Or thanks you, too, for supporting uh, Paul Johnson. Uh, so, yeah, keep that up. Uh, yep. Yeah. Um, oh, and a quick question for the Bammers. Quick question. I already know the answer to this, so if you you can consider this question rhetorical if you want to. Uh, it's up to you, but I would appreciate some answers. Uh, yeah, last week Lane Kiffin only scored 14 points against Arkansas. So, uh, of course, Uncle Lou had a few things to say about that. Uh, the response that I got from the Bammers was, uh, it's not Lane Kiffin's fault. The players have to execute and perform and blah, 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 blah on and on and on. Okay. So, uh, uh, yesterday you guys played Texas A&M. Uh, hold on a second. Yep, you just scored another touchdown on Texas A&M. So, you beat them 59 to nothing, I think it was, which is great. Um, so, what I want to know is, if it's not Lane Kiffin's fault when you only score 14 against Arkansas, can it be, how, how can it be Lane Kiffin's how can you give Lane Kiffin the credit for scoring 59? In other words, how come he gets the credit when you score 59 points, but none of the blame when you score 14 against Arkansas? That's my question. So, did the players just perform and execute yesterday? Um, I mean, this is what I want to know. I mean, you have the number one recruiting class every single year. Half your roster is going to be playing in the NFL. So, is it the Jimmys and the Joes, or is it the X's and the O's? That's what I want to know. Did the players just not show up for Arkansas, and then they decided to show up at home against a Texas A&M team that couldn't stop a leaky sink? Um, that's what I want to know. So, why does Lane Kiffin get none of the blame from the Bammers, yet all the credit uh, when you humiliate um, a demoralized uh, and mediocre at best Texas A&M team. That's what I want to know. So answer me that. Uh, oh, quick update here. Uh, quick update here. Uh, the lines just came out. The lines have just been updated. The betting lines, the Vegas odds have just been updated. Uh, and the odds uh, for this year's Dollar General Moral Victory Bowl, uh, starring Arkansas versus Tennessee. The line has been updated. Uh, yep. Uh, Tennessee now a four-point favorite. Uh, that's right, so they came down a little bit. Uh, I think they started out as a six-point favorite in this game. Uh, but, yep, Tennessee uh, versus Arkansas in the Dollar General uh, Moral Victory Bowl. Uh, played every year at, at Wrigley Field, home of the lovable losers. Uh, that's right, as of right now, Tennessee a four-point favorite. Uh, in the Moral Victory Bowl. Uh, I'll continue to up update this line every week for you guys. Uh, but, yep. Uh, Brett Bielema. Uh, sir. Uh, you you deserve what you're, what you're getting. When you were at Wisconsin, you used to run your mouth constantly about the SEC. Constantly. You had nothing but bad things to say about the SEC. You, talk, you constantly talked about how the SEC was overrated. You, you went on and on and on about how much better the Big Ten was uh, than the SEC, and, and Wisconsin in particular, and that it's not fair, and blah, 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 and the media, and ESPN loves the, loves the SEC, and on and on and on and on and on. Well, as soon as a job opened up in the SEC, you jumped on it uh, because you thought the SEC was such a joke, sir. Uh, and now here you are. 
two years in and you can't win one friggin' game, sir. Uh, so, Brett Bielema, if you're watching this, and I'm pretty sure that you are, uh, I need an apology from you, sir. Uh, that's right, I would prefer that you did it on video. Cam up, don't be a comment troll. Uh, we have enough of those uh, right now as it is. So, Brett Bielema, I need a video from you apologizing to Uncle Lou for running your mouth about the SEC and then not being able to win one single game. And while I'm on the subject of apologies, I have a couple of other people here that need to get in the, uh, in, in the I'm sorry line. Uh, number one, uh, th this the Auburn kid, uh, Brad's or whatever, what's his name, Pat's, Pat's AU boy, whatever his name is, he, he makes Auburn videos, and he makes, uh, Patriots videos, uh, sir, um, for the last couple of weeks, you have been running your mouth, uh, in the comment section of, of Uncle Lou videos, uh, and other videos too, um, about how sorry George is, because they're a one-man team, and without Gurley, they're gonna get dominated and humiliated, you did it last week against Missouri, how'd that work out for you, sir? Uh, well, I, I, the definition of ignorance, uh, uh, is doing the same thing over and over again, uh, expecting a different result. Well, you did the same thing this week, sir. Try to tell Uncle Lou how, how, how awesome Arkansas was just because they're in the West. Uh, they were going to go ahead and beat the brakes off Georgia. How did that work out? Uh, yep. So go ahead and apologize to Uncle Lou. That'd be amazing. Uh, let's see who else, uh, here owes Uncle Lou an apology. Uh, Oh, hate to do this, but I need to, uh, and I have to, too. Uh, hate going after my own here. Uh, but, uh, Mr. Herschel Talker, sir, uh, do Dog Nation a favor. Uh, and, uh, go ahead and keep some of those opinions to yourself, if you don't mind. Uh, seems like every week this year, you go ahead and predict a Georgia loss. Uh, I can't count how many times I've heard you type, type, type that Georgia was going to be 7-5 and five or 8-4 and four this year. Uh, you said we were going to lose to Missouri. You said we were going to lose to Arkansas. Um, when Todd Gurley was suspended, you said we were going to lose three out of our next four games. Uh, I, I don't understand, and I don't get it. Um, it doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, I, I know you're a Georgia fan, and, and Uncle Lou appreciates that, but... Uh, it's time to come around. I mean, f f what more do you need to see, sir? Uh, trying to, I don't know if there's anybody else or not. Uh, I'm sure there is, uh, but uh, I, I done got aggravated now talking about Brett Bielema. And but anyway, you know, Brett Bielema, I, I, it, you know, it's, it'd be one thing if you were setting the world on fire at Wisconsin, but, I mean, yeah. and you know who's next on this list? Bob Stoops. That's right, old big game Bob. Uh, you know, I don't, I, I, if you're in the Big Ten or, 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 the, or the Big 12 or whatever you're in, worry about that. I, I don't understand these coaches that think they got to get out and badmouth the SEC. I mean, check the bowl record. But that's all out. Check the bowl record. If, if you don't like the fact that the SEC is is killing you, then do something about it. Besides flap your gums, I mean, you know what? Forget it. Forget it. It's not even worth it.